Huge news today concerning the election. Shenanigans are all over the place. We're going to go over all of that in the podcast tomorrow. I wasn't going to do a podcast tomorrow, but I got a feeling this is going to be huge. I just want to... Rudy Giuliani had a news conference. Uh, Apparently, the left is flipping out about it. It's definitely worth looking at. So I'm going to watch the hour and a half news cop, the questions. We're going to have some... We're going to have some uh, audio. Oh, it's going to be kind of exciting. But the left is so much fun when it comes to this COVID thing. We need to look at that. Seems especially relevant since I just did a podcast on COVID a few days ago. So let's take a look at the hypocrisies of the Democratic, of the left. Not the Democratic Party, of the left when it comes to COVID. This is Gene and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Oh, we've got so so much fun stuff is coming down the line. So we've got this weekend's going to be a great weekend. Tomorrow we get to talk about how Georgia is really not working out real well. Um, How Pennsylvania is not working out real well. How the Trump campaign really believes they can still win this. And I'm hoping they can. I, I... can't tell you, but let's get into it. A third batch of missed votes in Georgia has been found and tabulated. Now, it doesn't narrow the lead by much. It's something like 6,000 votes. It's not that much, but it really is showing that there needs to be some sort of audit. An audit of the election in Georgia, this is from the Daily Wire, an audit of the election of Georgia uncovered dozens of uncounted votes in the town of between, uh, in a town of between in Walton County. Election officials found 284 ballots that, once counted, netted Trump 176 votes and cut slightly into Biden's lead. What a shock, huh? Former Vice President Biden, and this is again from the Daily Wire, former Vice President Biden still maintains a lead of 13,000 votes over Trump. The batch of uncounted votes found in pro-Trump Walton County is the third error revealed in Georgia's audit. There were 2,600 other votes. I believe 1,700 of them were for Trump. And those were because somehow people forgot to plug in a couple of USB sticks and download the vote. What the frick is going on here? I, what is What are votes doing on a USB stick? Am I missing something? If this election doesn't go our way, let's say it doesn't go Trump's way, which is my way. I want Trump to be president of the United States. I think he's going to be far better for the country than Joe Biden could ever be. The question is going to be, what the frick were you guys doing in 2020? Now, is this enough to overturn the election in Georgia? Probably not right now. But each time we have one of these irregularities, they always go against Donald Trump and they always go for Joe Biden. There's going to be some questions there. Trump may not win the election, but there are going to be some real questions. It is looking like this election was fixed and Biden is going to be called illegitimate. Definitely by the right. I'll call him illegitimate. He'll be my president. I I, I won't lie. He, He will be my president, but he will not be a duly elected, mandated president of the country, though I don't understand how they lose every house seat, how they lose every governorship, how they lose every every state legislature and still think they're legitimate, how they lose the Senate and Democrats still think they're legitimate. I don't know. Or this is a mandate. What a crock of crap. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow because the news is coming in hot and hot and steamy. I mean, it's all over the place. And I still haven't seen, I've been so busy writing this, I haven't even seen Rudy Giuliani's press conference. And apparently, the Kraken was released yesterday by this gal uh, whose name I, I forget. So I'm not even going to bother talking about it till tomorrow. But 
The election is getting hot and heavy, and we've literally got about a month before, a little less than a month, three weeks before we need to get this taken care of. Because here's the story, folks. December 14th, the electors are going to be announced. Oh, that's right. No state has certified their vote. I forgot to tell you that. And in Pennsylvania, I believe it is either Pennsylvania or Michigan, there are two people from the Republican Party who refused to certify the vote. They felt threatened. They actually voted to certify the vote either in Michigan or Pennsylvania, and then they changed their minds. They said, no, we've been threatened. This is not good. There's also video evidence. There's audio. I, there's so much going on here. We're just going to have to let this go and see what's going on. So let's let's get to the COVID thing because this is fun stuff. Uh, apparently, the Big Apple is rotting. New York has decided to suppress their city again. They decided to go on full lockdown. And it's all because there's been a spike in COVID. Quality of the life is sucking eggs right now. It's really bad. Let's take a look and see what these geniuses, Andrew Cuomo and Bill de Blasio, are doing to totally F up New York City. And they are effing New York City up. I kid you not. New York City officials announced Wednesday that they are shutting down the city's entire public school system. And that's today. So no kid is going to school. Chancellor of Education. Richard A. Carranza wrote in an email to principals, quote, as of this, this is all from the Daily Wire, by the way. Go to Dumbasses Talking Politics, you can actually see the links. As of this morning, November 18th, the city has now reached the threshold of test positivity citywide, and as a result, the DOE, which is the Department of Education, will temporarily close down all public school buildings for in-person uh, learning Thursday, November 19th, which is today while I'm recording this. Mayor Bill Blasio said, quote, New York City has reached the 3% testing positivity seven-day average threshold. Unfortunately, this means public school buildings will be closed as of tomorrow, Thursday, November 19th. Out, and, out of an abundance of caution, we must fight back against the second wave. Here's the thing. Um, uh, the school system doesn't have a 3% infection rate. As a matter of fact, the latest... Ah, we'll get to that in a second. And by the way, closing down the schools, you're not fighting against the virus. You're surrendering to the virus. But I, I want you to listen to uh, Chancellor Carranza in his statement. And tell me if you notice something. A happy day for us in the Department of Education. It's been an eventful and very challenging year in so many ways and to say the least. But our schools have opened and been remarkably safe with a 0.19 positivity rate. They've also been safe havens for our children. And we know our students need that interaction. So we feel a deep sense of commitment to making sure we can open for in-person learning again. Did you catch that? Did you catch it? What stuck out in your head? Did he say that the schools had a 0.19 infection rate? That means, this is mathematics, folks. I know the right is not, the right is not scientific. They don't really think of things. Unfortunately, I did do some math in high school and college. So um, that means that two out of 10,000 people are actually getting infected by the coronavirus in schools two out of ten thousand the kids have more of a chance of getting killed driving to school than they do of no 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 the kids have more have more of a chance getting killed driving to school than they do actually catching covid19 in school and do you notice something and i'm, I'm gonna beat on this drum until people get it um there's no talk about death rates. Do you know why? Death rates are down 83%. Even people who are catching it are, have some insane number to actually survive the death rates, to actually survive COVID. That means they only have a, like a 
3% chance of surviving COVID. This is insane. I actually had to look up. I had to look up the current COVID spread in schools. And this is updated today. It's 0.23%. Again, 2 in 10,000 people actually get this disease. Even de Blasio said the day before closing the schools that the statistics showed that the uh, that the stats showed that the infection wasn't spreading in schools. Teachers weren't getting it. Students weren't getting it. But he closed them down anyway. Yes, maybe the city has hit the 3% threshold. The schools have not. I thought the left was the party of science, the party of statistics, the party of data, the party of facts. Why aren't they looking at the stats and the science? What about the other issues that the pediatric, American Pediatric Association said was happening during remote, quote, remote learning? Because let's call, let's call it what it is. They're not learning shit in uh, remote learning. I've got two kids that are doing remote learning. I've got a daughter in college that's doing remote learning, and she said she's having difficulty learning anything. And she's at UCLA. She's pretty smart. Things including depression, abuse, child abuse, drug use, and suicide. Why aren't these things being brought up? Why aren't these things actually being put into that ball of bullshit? They're not. Uh, yeah, well, de Blasio isn't the only idiot. Um, well, he may be an idiot because I guess he forgot to tell uh, the governor, Andrew Cuomo, on his decision to close the schools. During a press conference, a reporter from the Wall Street Journal asked about the policy of closing schools. That seemed to take Cuomo by surprise, and he started yelling at the reporter. Now listen to this. So what are you talking about? How, what are you talking about? You're now going to override. We did it already. That's the law, an orange zone and a red zone. Follow the facts. I'm still confused. Well, then you're confused. I'm confused. And then I I'll tell you what you mean. Still, parents are still confused as well. The schools oh, in they're not confused. Tomorrow. You're confused. No, I think but parents read the are law, confused as well. Read the law and you won't be confused. Because it seems to me that it's Andrew Cuomo that is confused and... He decided to take it on someone who has was very asking a very valid question that a lot of people looking at the science and data are asking. It just shows how disconnected and tone deaf he is. This guy has jacked up the pandemic since day one. Now that there is a second wave, which was probably caused uh, by the first set of lockdowns, basically postponing this the spike. I mean, if no one's getting it. The, the disease isn't going anywhere. No one's controlling this disease. He decides to lock down again. And what's going to happen in six weeks when he decides to open the state up again? Guess what's going to happen? Another spike. Nothing's going to change. This is why Texas and Florida on Wednesday are not going to close again. They stated it. People are going to have to live with the virus instead of trying to, quote, control, end quote, or get rid of it. It's not going anywhere. I would say even the vaccines are not 100% saying it's going to go away. But I don't know why Andy is so pissed off. Yeah, people are beginning to blame him for COVID. He has a huge budget deficit. He doesn't know what's going on in his own state. His tax base is beginning to leave the state. There's a huge homeless drug and crime problem throughout his state. And unemployment has doubled the national average. But he did get a raise. Good for him. He did get a raise because he probably deserved it. Demo uh, from the Daily Wire, Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo. His salary jumped from 225000 to 250000 a year. He will be the highest paid governor in the country. And I'm quoting from Daily Wire here. But while Cuomo will get his raise, along with Lieutenant Governor Kathy Huchel, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but I really don't give a damn. These people don't deserve to be pronounced correctly. Attorney General Letitia James and Comptroller Tom DiNapoli, 
All Democrats, New York legislatures, judges, commissioners are not entitled to any such thing, according to the Commission on Legislative, Judicial, and Executive Compensation panel, which decided on Monday that there wasn't room in the state's budget for that. The decision can be overturned by the state legislature, but that is considered unlikely. Cuomo's raise was appro- approved last year by the state, by the Senate and the Assembly. You know, here, here's the thing. This is what Cuomo could do. Is just say, uh, no. I, I, I can't take this raise. He didn't. He won't. On Tuesday, Cuomo asked the federal government for more money, money stating, quote, we don't have a shovel big enough to dig us out of the deficit. It's the biggest number in history. We need help from Washington. Biden ran and I know him and I support it and he's a good man. He will fund the state and local governments balancing the budget. It must be nice to be one of the most incompetent governors in the country, still get a huge raise, and then ask another Democrat to freaking bail his ass out. Good for Governor Cuomo. There's a new scandal involving Democratic Governor, uh, California Governor, uh, Gavin Newsom. He attended a dinner with several other people amid the pandemic on Wednesday, and he had just shut down the state of California and told everyone that they could not celebrate Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, Ramadan, whatever holidays are coming up. And he doesn't want anyone going to church or anything like that. Um, two top officials for the from the California Medical Association actually attended the dinner. The dinner was inside, though he said the doors were open. The doors turned out not to be open because the group was too loud. Uh, they actually had to shut the doors and he stayed there for a few hours. Um, now this comes after Newsom said that if we go to Thanksgiving dinner with more than 10 people, supposedly SWAT will, you know, bust into our houses and start shooting us or throwing us in jail or fining us or whatever. And that we did need to actually eat have a mask on during Thanksgiving dinner, take a bite and put the mask on, back on, and then chew. Which, I don't know about you, that doesn't exactly sound like it's something that is clean. I don't know, it doesn't sound very sanitary. He did apologize. He had to apologize. He was caught red-handed. There are pictures of it. Let's listen to his apology. On the minimized mixing, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge something just before we go into the Q&A. Uh, and that is very soberly acknowledge that a few weeks ago, uh, I was asked to go to a friend's 50th birthday. Uh, my wife and I, a friend that I've known for almost 20 years and, uh, and a friend that had, well, put a lot of time and energy into his 50th birthday. It was in Napa, which was in the orange status, relatively loose compared to some other counties. Uh, it was to be an outdoor uh, uh, restaurant. And we started the, well, the program started at 4 o'clock. It was one of those early reservations. I got there a little bit late at 4.30. Uh, and as soon as I sat down at uh, the larger table, I realized it was a little larger group uh, than I had anticipated. Uh, and I made a bad mistake. Instead of sitting down, uh, I should have stood up and walked back, got in my car, and drove back uh, to my house. Instead, I chose to sit there with my wife uh, and a number of other couples that were outside the household. And you can quibble about the guidelines, et cetera, et cetera, but the spirit of what I'm preaching all the time uh, was contradicted, and i got to own that. And so I want to apologize to you uh, because... I need to preach and practice, not just preach and not practice. And I've done my best to do that. Uh, We're all human. We all fall short sometimes. Uh, His apology left a little to be desired. First thing Newsom does throughout his apology is smile. It just doesn't look authentic. He gets a ration of crap about this because he's basically shutting down California again is prohibiting families to get together during the holidays and congregations from celebrating their religion or at church or temple. And 
all he can do is go to a birthday party and during a half-assed apology is smile. Newsom has to pick a senator soon to replace Kamala Harris if she ends up being vice president of the United States. There's thought that he might appoint himself to the Senate for two reasons. One, to get out of California because this this is a scandal and he may want to be in Washington, D.C. and just get away from it. That would probably create another scandal, but he's got that decision to make. And then Diane Feinstein, who's 87 years old, um, she's said that she wants to retire soon. So it's very possible Gavin Newsom's going to have to appoint two different senators. Gavin Newsom is a power monger too. That's what he is. He's probably going to sit back and he it's very possible he's going to appoint himself to one of these positions. But, and I think I've done this in previous podcasts, it just shows the hypocrisy I have been talking about forever about the left. It doesn't matter what you need. It's like what we learned in um, Animal Farm, which I'm going to finish chapter 10. It's going to be a very quick chapter. It's going to be a very quick podcast about the left. They just don't care. And this is never a good thing. But things get better. Uh, According to the Daily Wire, on Tuesday, the administration of Democratic Governor Tom Wolf announced a new coronavirus-related crackdown on its citizens in Pennsylvania which includes a mask mandate for people inside their homes. At the behest of Dr. Rachel Levine, the Secretary of Health and Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, citizens are going to be mandated to mask up in their homes if people outside their household are inside. Here's a newsflash. Um, If you're worried about giving or getting coronavirus, China virus, Wuhan flu, whatever you want to call it. Don't invite those people over. Or you can get wild and crazy and you can ask those people, hey, do you have coronavirus? I don't think inside our homes is the place that the government should be actually giving us information on. These people are insane. There was a Dutch, there was a Dutch, um, a Dutch uh, research project that basically said there is absolutely no evidence. And by the way, this is the only, the only research paper that's been released on masking during the coronavirus. The only one that says there's absolutely no evidence masking does anything anyway. Sorry, bad news. That Does that mean you should throw away your mat? No, not at all. It does not mean we should mask. Companies want you to mask. You go to Walmart, they want you to mask. Well, then put the damn mask on. It's not that big of a deal. Put the mask on when you walk into a business. They ask you to do it. Just do it. But we can see, before it was just businesses or gatherings that were wearing a mask. Now we're seeing we need to wear a mask in our own homes. We're seeing we can't go to church. Soon it will be, we need to wear a mask when we're taking a walk to get some exercise. There are a couple of states that are actually pushing that bullshit. You can get fined $100 to $200 or get arrested if you're not wearing a mask outside. Yeah, that's probably not a thing. Probably not going to happen. I tell you what, I walk to the store all the time. I love walking to the store. I do not, I have a mask in my pocket. It's in my pocket right now. I walk to the store. I put my mask on before I walk into the store because they want me to. And I totally respect business. If Walmart, Target, Best Buy, a mall, they want me to wear a mask. I wear a mask. It's their private property, their business. They want that. I have no problem with it. I don't even think it's virtue signaling or anything. I just think it's, they want you to wear a mask. Okay, wear a mask. I have no problem with it. But if I am walking, 
I'm taking a two mile walk because I'm trying to get some exercise or I'm running or I'm biking they and I'm biking alone, running alone, walking alone or walking with my fiance and our kids. Hell will freeze over before I actually go out there and wear a mask, especially if I'm alone in the 70 in the 65 degree temperatures of Los of California, not Los Angeles. I live in San Diego. So it is just complete, absolute crap. When governments start walking into our homes and telling us what we can do, there's a huge problem. If they want us to wear a mask in church, if they want us to wear a mask, okay, I have no problem with that. In businesses, I have no problem with that. But when they say you have to wear a mask in your own home, if someone comes to visit you, that should be my problem. That should be me saying, do you have um, coronavirus? They say no. If I trust them, they come over. Or if I'm not sure, or I don't know this person, they don't come over. I say no, don't come over. That's me. That's called freedom, individuality. And this is what's so disgusting about all this stuff. And by the way, do you think Gavin Newsom, Lori Lightfoot, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer... Joe Biden, do you think any of these assholes really worry Gil Garcetti, who, by the way, is considered for the, is being considered for that Senate post? Do you think any of those people give a rat's frickin' ass about um, masking? No, they don't, because they go out and they, they get their haircuts. They go to the gyms. Bill de Blasio, Andrew Cuomo, they go to parties. They're going to have 15 people at their, 20, 30 people at their Thanksgiving. They're going to celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. They don't care. Uh, the final story is a pop culture story. And it, it's not something that really bothered me. I don't think too much of it because I think pop culture is stupid. But uh, this, again, is from the Daily Wire. And it's something to talk about. So, from the Daily Wire, Harry Styles, the English singer, songwriter, and actor who rose to stardom as part of an English boy band of the English boy band One Direction, stirred controversy when Vogue announced that he would be starring in their December issue um, while wearing a dress. Ben Sh um, Candace Owens sent out a tweet that basically said that men should be men and that she feels that, uh, and I'm, I'm making this up because I actually don't have the quote here, that men should be men, they should be masculine, and she wants masculinity to be a deal. Ben Shapiro supported Candace Owens. By the way, Candace Owens is a black woman, if you don't know. If you do know, you should be listening to her podcast because she's great. Ben Shapiro said, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, this is what Candace Owens says, I do have it here. This is perfectly obvious. Anyone who pretends that it is not a referendum on masculinity for men to don floofy dresses is treating you as a full-on idiot. Uh, Matt Walsh, who's also on the Daily Wire, said Candace Owens is trending because a bunch of whiny idiots are mad that she said men who wear dresses aren't manly. Lots of the press, and this is for me, but lots of the press are, and those on social media, said that what Styles did is brave. Quote, brave. End quote. Quote, revolutionary. End quote. And, quote, the new image of what masculinity is supposed to look like, end quote. I have one word for this, bullshit, okay? And for you leftists out there, bullshit is actually one word, it's not two words. I know that being a masculine man is considered toxic, dangerous, and evil. I'm a masculine man. Um, Dave, who I haven't talked to in a while, I need to get a hold of. He's a masculine man. We're masculine men. That's what it is. But it's not evil. It's not dangerous. It's not toxic. As a matter of fact, 
Real masculinity is needed in this world. Now, I'm not saying that a man wearing a dress is bad or a man who wants to be a woman is bad. Uh, honestly, I couldn't care less. I believe in freedom to be an individual, whatever that might be and however weird it is to me. But I do not believe in the redef de uh, redefinition of our states of being. I think it's terrible. Masculinity is not only a desired trait for female mates, it is a need for our li for the life of our country. It is needed for war. It's needed to be a good mate. It's needed to be a father, a parent. What is masculinity? Well, it's going to be very controversial, but this is what I think masculinity is. It's one who takes responsibility to provide for that fa for his family or her family. We're going to talk about, I'm going to say his or her family. It's being chivalrous. I think opening the door for a woman is masculine. I think opening the car door for a woman is masculine. I think letting a woman order first at a restaurant is masculine. It's being a leader. Even when people don't want you to lead. It's being honest and open and true. It's being loving. It's being a protector. It's standing up for the honor of yourself, your mate, and your family. Being an educator for your children. Whether that be teaching them how to do math or actually coaching a team that your child is on. It's being gentle caring and compassionate. It's being a mentor or a counselor, whether that be for your mate, your family, or your children. It's being brave, especially when you're really afraid. Having these qualities, I don't know, seems to be kind of like a good thing. And this doesn't mean... Only straight men are masculine. You can be masculine when gay or transgender. Even a woman can have such masculine qualities, and most do. But they still maintain their femininity. Which, by the way, I really am attracted to femininity. I'm also attracted to the strength, the masculine strength, like my, my fiancé. She has very masculine strength, and I respect that, and I like it. They're great qualities. There's nothing wrong with being masculine, being feminine, but there has to be a mix in it, and being a man is a thing. You know what isn't masculine? Being a cheater. Screwing around on your wife or your mate. Being a wife beater. Being a child abuser. Living on welfare and food stamps for long periods of time because you don't want to get a job. Here's something wild. Wearing a dress. Not masculine. If my girlfriend saw me wearing a dress, uh, she'd be gone. There'd be no question. She'd be out. The left is constantly trying to push us into these new, quote, norms. I never buy their bullshit. Here's a new slide. Yeah, where, let me prove it to you. Men are men. I don't care if you mutilate your genitals. Women are women. I don't care if you mutilate your genitals. Babies are babies at conception. So abortion is murdering babies. By the way, everything that I just said is already proven by science. You know, because how scientific the left is. They just refuse. They, sat, they sit back and say that a male... A biological male should compete against biological females. And when they win, that's a that's a fight for transgender rights. Bullshit. I hate that. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to throw on a pair of jeans, t-shirt, and my chucks. I'm probably going to wear, I'm probably not going to wear my pink thong, my mini skirt, and that silk white blouse that I've had my eye on. 
That's because I'm masculine. It's I'm a man. My fiancé likes me being masculine. My fiancé likes the way I look. She likes the way I smell. She likes the way that I give her shit. She likes the way that I um, protect her. She likes. She even likes the fact that I sit there and make an ass out of myself because I don't like what someone said to her. My kids like me being masculine. I like my dad being masculine. I would suggest that men out there do the same thing or do what they think is masculine. It's not a sin. Harry Styles, whoever he is, I never listened to One Direction. I've never seen any of his movies. No, he was in Dunkirk. I did see Dunkirk. I actually own Dunkirk. Uh, but whoever he is, he is not the blueprint of what masculine or what a man is. And he proved that by putting on a dress. Okay, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, at Run and Fool, R-U-N-N-I-N-F-E-W-L. I just got a uh, an account on Parlor. I'm you're gonna find me on Parlor also. Uh, I'll have to get the all the information there. I have to fix my profile on Parlor, and then you can follow me on Parlor, which is the conservative voice of Twitter. It's actually the opposite of Twitter, just conservative. Um, you can listen or download to this this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can visit my website at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com where you can actually see all of my links and any video and audio that I posted. This is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics.